Good morning. I'm Anita, and I'm so excited to share something with you guys today. Let me shut off the blower motor and put on some makeup. Hold on. That's better, right? Okay, you guys. I have a hard time explaining step by step what has helped me change my life. And my life is forever changed. So I'm out here cleaning the porch, having the last fire of the year probably, and I found this book. And I said, this, this will help. This will help some people. So this is the book I found, Journey into Healing, Awakening the Wisdom Within You by Deepak Chopra. I got it from the library for a buck, I think, you guys. And I just found this book this morning. And so I sat down and I read it. Meditation has changed my life. I cannot tell you. So I'm going to give you a little read. Journey into Healing, Awakening the Wisdom Within You by Deepak Chopra, MD. In this volume, essential ideas from the work of Deepak Chopra, MD, are arranged to create a transcendent experience for the reader. A journey into healing. Along the path, we discover that we think and feel can actually change our biology. We learn to go beyond self imposed limitations that create disease and to seek that place inside ourselves that is at one with infinite intelligence of the universe the source of life. By the final pages of this book, the reader's consciousness will have been altered by the experience of the journey itself. Such changes has the power to transform our lives, to grace us with the gifts of lasting peace and perfect health. The final pages of this book contain techniques for the medi mindfulness meditation, which can access the silent space between your thoughts and tap into the inner wisdom that will make your dreams come true. And I'm going to read that meditation. Okay? Okay, first there's this. Attend to your own inner health and well-being. Happiness radiates like the fragrance from a flower and draws all good things towards you. Allow your love to nourish yourself as well as others. Do not strain after the needs of life. It is sufficient to be quietly alert and aware of them. In this way, life proceeds more naturally and effortlessly. Life is here to enjoy. Do not strain after the needs of life. It is sufficient to be quietly alert and aware of them. Although in the West today, meditation is thought of in terms of stress management and relaxation, its true purpose is a spiritual one. The yogis and seers who first recognized these practices were already pretty relaxed living in their caves in the Himalayas. They meditated to discover their true selves. They meditated for enlightenment. Of all the experiences we have, the experience of our inner self is the most important. The body is the objective experience of our ideas while the mind is the subjective experience of them. The body is ever-changing, and the mind 
with its thoughts, feelings, and desires also creates and goes. Oh, I'm sorry. And the mind with its thoughts, feelings, and desires also comes and goes. They are both experiences locked in time and space. They are not experience. In a minute. They are both experiences locked in time and space. They are not the experiencer. The one who is having the experience is beyond time and space. It is the real you. It is the timeless factor in every time bound experience. The feeler behind the feeling. The thinker of thoughts. The animator of our bodies and minds. It is our soul. Nowadays, science has enabled us to track a thought or an intention a microsecond after it happens, but all the scientific equipment in the world still cannot tell us where the thought is coming from or who is having it. You cannot find the real you in your mind or your body because you are simply not there. We can listen to Beethoven on the radio, but there is no point in taking the radio apart to find Beethoven. He is not there. The radio is just an instrument that traps a field of information and converts it into a space-time event. Similarly, the real you is a knock is a non-local field of information that is trapped in space and time by the body and mind. Your soul, the thinker of thoughts, finds expression through the mind and body, through mind and body, but when body and brain, brain are destroyed, nothing happens to the real you. The unconditional spirit is the energy or matter. It is in the silent spaces between our thoughts. There is a space between each of your thoughts where you manufacture your thoughts, where you are infinite choice maker, an infinite choice maker. The gap between thoughts is the window to your higher self, the window to the cosmic self. The real you cannot be squeezed into the volume of the body or the span of a lifetime. It is the thinker in the field of memory and information in the space between thoughts. The space between thoughts is silence. It is a pregnant silence. This is a silence filled with an infinite possibility of thoughts, a field of pure potentiality. In the real self, the thinker is a silent, infinite choice maker that resides at the level of the gap. The real you and the real me are both silent fields of infinite possibilities. The differences between you and me are the different possible experiences we choose the level of the gap. We choose at the level of the gap. Action creates memory. Memory creates desire. And desire again leads to action. The seeds of our memories and desires in the gap seek manifestation through the instruments of the mind and body and create the whole world in which we live. Our existence has three levels. One, the physical body made up of matter and energy. Two, the subtle body comprising of mind, intellect, the ego, and three, the casual body, which comes, which contains the soul and the spirit. The practice of meditation takes our awareness from the disturbed state of consciousness in the mind and the world of physical objects to the silent undisturbed state of consciousness in the realm of the soul and spirit. Through regular 
practice, we gain access to the infinite storehouse of knowledge, the ultimate reality of creation. We have the experience of who we really are, pure, unbounded consciousness. When we experience who we really are, we restore the memory of wholeness or healing in our lives. There are many forms of meditation. The more advanced practices involve the use of mantras. I am worthy. I am that I am. I attract like-minded individuals, loving souls. That's a couple of my mantras. The more advanced practices involve the use of mantras. Mantras are primordial sounds. Ah, e, o. Where did I go? See, mines are usually mantras are usually selected by a qualified instructor and taught on an individual basis. At the Center for the Mind Body Medicine in San Diego, we teach the the primordial sound meditation. Less specific, less specific, but effectively, but effective meditations are also available. Now, one such practice, the mindful meditation, is described here. In an excellent way to get started with meditation, and it's 11:44. I'll timestamp that, 11:44, because this is the mindful meditation. I had to pause it. Good coffee. Good morning. The Mindfulness Meditation, Deepak Chopra. The Mindfulness Meditation Technique is a simple meditation procedure that can create a deep state of relaxation in your mind and body. As the mind quiets down but remains awake, you will experience deeper more silent level of awareness. One, start by sitting comfortably in a quiet place where you will have a, mac a minimum amount of disturbance. Two, close your eyes. Three, breathe normally and naturally and gently allow your awareness to be on your breathing. Simply observe your breath. Try not to control it or alter it in any conscious way. Four. As you observe your breath, you may notice that it change that it changes of its own accord. I'm having trouble with my eyes. It may carry in speed, rhythm, and depth. And there may even be occasions when your breath seems to stop for a time. Whatever happens with your breathing, innocently observe it without trying to cause or initiate any changes. Five, you will find that at times your attention drifts away from your breath and you are thinking about other things or listening to noises outside. Whenever you notice you are not observing your breath, gently bring your attention back to your breathing. Six, If during the meditation you notice that you are focusing on some feeling, mind, or expectation, treat that as you would any other thought and gently bring your attention back to your breathing. 7. Practice this meditation technique for 15 minutes. At the end of the 15 minutes, keep your eyes closed. Just sit 
easily for two or three minutes. Allow yourself to come out of the meditation gradually before opening your eyes and resuming your activity. It is recommended that you practice this mindful, mindfulness meditation technique for 15 minutes twice a day in the morning and in the evening. You may also use this technique for a few minutes during the day to help you center yourself if you are feeling upset or agitated. During the practice of the meditation, you will have one of three experiences. All of these are correct experiences. You ready? One. You may feel bored or restless and your mind may become filled with thoughts. This is an indication that deep-rooted stress and emotions are being released from your system. By effortlessly continuing with meditation, you will facilitate you will facilitate and re oh, the removal of these impurities from your mind and body. Sorry. You may fall asleep. I have. There's a reason for that. You may fall asleep. If you fall asleep in the meditation, it is an indication that you need more rest during the day, during other times of the day. Three, you may slip into the gap where the mantra or breath becomes very settled and refined. You slip into the gap between thoughts, beyond sound, beyond breath. If you stay rested, take care of yourself and take time to continue to, to meditation, you are bound to get in touch with your inner self. You will tap into the cosmic mind, the voice that whispers to you non-verbally in the silent spaces between your thoughts. This is the inner intelligence and it is the ultimate supreme genius that mirrors the wisdom of the universe. Trust this inner wisdom and all your dreams will come true. So I was reading some little excerpts in here. Enchantment is our natural state. If I find a green meadow splashed with daisies and sit down beside a clear running brook, I have found medicine. As long as the flow of change within us is fresh, we will be perfectly healthy. Healthy people live neither in the past nor in the future. They live in the present, in the now, which gives the now a flavor of eternity because no shadows fall, no shadows fall across it. I believe in the goodness of my physician. He told me that the purpose of life is to be happy and to receive wise and happy thoughts from every part of the universe. There was a piece in here. I've got to read it to you guys because I couldn't believe that I picked this book up. And he mentions a book that I read. Ah, uh, guys, let me find it. Accept what comes to you totally and completely so that you can appreciate it, learn from it, and then let it go. Intentions automatically seek their fulfillment if left alone. Quietly, in your own heart, say that you do not want to be afraid. 
If we ever stopped being so fixated on the outcome of our actions, we would perceive that moments of choice interrupt the steady flow of bliss. A gap is created, and in the gap is judgment. Where is it? Where he mentions... To experience bliss every hour of the day would be a sign of complete enlightenment, but even a brief encounter is, an, is significant. It permits you to actually feel waves of consciousness as they well up from a field of silence, cross the gap, and are infused into every soul. This is the body's own awakening. As you grow in being, innocence flowers on its own. The love that accepts everything is one day found in your own heart. Where does he mention it? Well, this is something he wrote here. I recall the fascinating sight of a beekeeper who reached into a swarm of bees and gently unfolding the queen in his hand moved the whole hive, the living globe of insects suspended in mid-air. What was he moving? There was no solid mass, only an image of hovering, darting, ever-changing life centered around a single focal point. The swarm is an illusion of shape behind which the reality is pure change. Such are we too. We are swarm of molecules hovering around an invisible center. If you look closely at your own life, you will realize that you are sending signals to your body that repeat the same old fears and wishes the same old habits of yesterday and the day before. That is why you are stuck with the same old body. Bad habits are just the worn out ruts of the mind, paths that once led to freedom because they opened up new thoughts, but now lead nowhere. Our normal waking state perception of ourselves is usually ill-equipped to realize how much joy exists inside. No one has ever found a new world by worrying about it. My tormentor is myself left over from yesterday. Instead of consciously creating disease, we could be consciously creating health. When you realize that you have control over any interpretation you place upon your body, an enormously liberating idea begins to dawn. The body is on your side. We have the power to make reality. Why make it inside boundaries when the boundaries is so near? One essential state that we are completely dimensionless, pure potentiality that can manifest into any form, into any phenomena in creation. Who has ever photographed a possibility Yet that is all the quantum world is made of. If you say a word or make a molecule, you have chosen to act. A little wave laps from the ocean's surface, becoming an incident in the space-time world. The whole ocean remains behind a vast, silent reservoir of possibilities of waves that have yet to be born. Perception and experience are both created by the mind. The eye 
and what it sees, the ear and what it hears, the tongue and what it tastes, the nose and what it smells, the nerves and what they feel. Your mind gives you control, the ab ability to have any reaction you want. Getting well does not need struggle. There is no enemy within. Recovery lies only at the level of being. In mind-body medicine, any explanation has its roots in earlier stage, in the moment when the immune system was weakened by a negative mental influence. And that's all I'm going to read today from the journey into healing. I'm all about healing. You guys know that. I'm sending you so much love from my heart to yours. Be mindful. Take some time to be quiet and get to know you. You matter. You are a beautiful being of light. Shine your light bright. Be you. Be kind. Meditation. Mindfulness meditation. Really, really, I encourage you. I encourage you. Take a little time and get to know you and just be quiet for a bit. You learn a lot. What you think is, what you think is, what you put out there, what you put in. Hang on a minute. Here's what's for breakfast. Here's what's for lunch. Usually make a smoothie. I'll have that for dinner because I gained five pounds. The other day I was upset and I ate almost a whole pint of ice cream. Chocolate chip mint. So here's what's for lunch. Garbanzo beans. High, high, high in protein. I rinse off the salt. Sometimes I put a little coconut oil in the pan Rinse these real good, dry them real good. Sear them in coconut oil. Oh my goodness, you talk about good. And I'm gonna have an avocado sliced on garlic toast with these. And then tonight, I'll drink my smoothie. I'm gonna do some stretches. And I'm gonna take really good care of myself and I hope you do too. Make it a great day. Peace out. I'll see you when I see you. You never really do know. I love you so much. I really do. Peace.